How's it going, you guys? AZ Player 21 back again with another episode here in our UFC save in WMMA5. And today we have for you UFC on ESPN Blades versus Volkov. Main event, of course, in the heavyweight division, Curtis Blades taking on Alexander Volkov. Co-main event in the featherweight division, Ryan Hall taking on Zubaira to Kagoff. Johnson versus Makachev, Gane versus Brown, Miller versus Ismagalov, Kunitskaya versus GDR. Prelims are is there if you want to see them. All right. Uh, I mean, nothing really to do. Last time that you guys saw me was for that large three hour booking uh, stream that I do. Our next episode is going to be UFC on ABC Brunson versus Weidman. That is going to be the next fight card that I bring to you guys. So let's go ahead and get right into it. It's fight night. Blades versus Volkov. Let's go. Of course, taking place in Moscow, Volkov's hometown. Let's go ahead and get this one started. Is that him? No, that's that's a Swiatek who we have on our roster. So let's go ahead and get it started with the first prelim of the afternoon. Kamal Magomedov taking on Amaran Gogoladze. 8-0 taking on 7-1. and one. Magomedov favored despite him being shorter by 6 inches. And the six inches definitely helped as both men are now 8-1. and one. Gogoladze getting a good win here in what I assume is not his UFC debut, but he gets his first win in his UFC career. Alexandra Stitch Albu taking on Estela Nunes. Nunes 7-1-1. and one. Albu is 3-2. and two. And Alexandra Albu gets the win, the Moscow native. Azamat. Shukov taking on Artur Bagautinov in the flyweight division. 6-1 and one, taking on 5-1-1. One and one. and Bagautinov gets the win via unanimous decision. Khalid Murtazaliev taking on Mahmoud Muradov. Czech Republic is where Muradov is from. Uh, Murtazaliev is where... Uh, Murtazaliev is a Russian from Moscow. In the middleweight division, and Murtazaliev gets the win via TKO in round number two. And he'd like to face Anthony Fluffy Hernandez next. Muslim King of Kung Fu Salikov taking on Randy Rude Boy Brown. Randy Brown, the favorite at 12 and 4, 6 2, 3 inches taller than Salikov, who is 16 and 3. And Salikov gets the win via unanimous decision. Shows some respect. To Randy Brown. Adam Yandiev taking on Saperbek Safarov. A lot of Russians on this card. Yandiev, the small favorite at minus 150, and he gets the win via unanimous decision. Alexei Kunchenko taking on Ramazan Emiev. Kunchenko was supposed to be a really good prospect. Not a prospect, but he was supposed to come into the UFC with a, a great force. And uh, as you can see, losing to Gilbert Burns after winning his first two fights, losing to Easy DS as well. In this save, though, he has a, a win over Bilal Muhammad, so a win here might get him a might get him a ranking. Taking on Emiev, who is coming off a win over Dwight Grant in game as well. And Kunchenko gets the win via unanimous decision in what was a fantastic fight. Love to see that Kunchenko back on the rise at 36 years of age and he'd like to take on Takashi Sato in his next fight. Alright, first fight of the main card Yana Kunitskaya taking on the Iron Lady Jermaine Durandamy of course Jermaine Durandamy is coming off the loss to Macy Chason in game after losing to Amanda Nunes for the title and Kunitskaya I believe this is her first fight of the save no. So she lost to Sarah McMahon back on the Poirier versus Hooker card. And she's favored against GDR, and she gets demolished in 53 seconds via TKO. Durandamy improving to 10-5 and five and getting a well-needed win there. The young woman out of the Netherlands. Jim Miller now taking on Demir Ismagalov in the lightweight division. Ismagalov 20-1 and one in his career. Perfect in the UFC thus far, coming off a win over Jonathan Pierce on the Garbrandt versus Dodson fight card. Jim Miller, heavy favorite, coming off a loss over Evan Dunham. Oh, excuse me. 
on the Habib versus Ferguson card. Jim Miller heavily favored, and he gets the win via rear naked choke, handing Ismagulov just his second loss of his career. And he'd like to fight Charles Oliveira next after a very impressive win. Up next, in the heavyweight division, Cyril Gane taking on Travis Hoppe Brown. Brown, a small underdog here. His, uh, I was going to say his first fight back, but it was actually against Ben Rothwell. He got the win via TKO back on uh, the Lawler versus Magny fight card. Taking on Cyril Gane, 7-0, coming off a win over Blagoy Ivanov. And Cyril Gane gets the win via knockout in round number one. That's very good because we're hyping him up a lot. So getting a knockout is going to prove pretty effective. The whole package, charismatic talker, looks to match superstar quality in this sort of setting. Love to see that. Up next, Michael Johnson at 20 and 15, taking on Islam Makachev, 18 and 2. Makachev coming off of the loss to Kevin Lee on the Marais versus Sanhagen fight card. And Michael Johnson, what has he been up to? Coming off a win over Francisco Trinaldo on the Poye Hooker card. And Michael Johnson beats Islam Makachev via TKO in round number two. So he'll definitely be moving up the rankings after a very impressive win over that young Russian. And he gives his respect to Islam. Co-main event of the evening as Ryan Hall takes on Zubaira Tukagov. A couple of uh, Habib's boys going at it here. Coming off a win over Kevin Aguilar, his first fight of the save. And Ryan Hall, in the game, has two wins to his name against Duho Choi and Chaz Skelly. Trying to improve to 11-1 and one and be undefeated in the UFC still. Heavy favorite. And Ryan Hall wins via submission due to an arm bar. Two and a half minutes into the very first round. And he would like to fight Paddy Pimblett next. Interesting. Hopefully he gets a, a ranking by his name as we are at the main event of the evening. Curtis Razor Blades taking on Alexander Volkov in the heavyweight division. Volkov, number five heavyweight, coming off a win over Walt Harris on the Garbrandt versus Dodson fight card. And Curtis Blades coming off a win over Hayer Rosenstrike on the Usman versus Masvidal fight card. All right, let's see what happens here in Russia. Blades versus Volkov. Let's get it going. Referee is Josh Rosenthal. Blades a good 15, 20 pounds heavier than Volkov. I'd imagine Blades is going to want to take it to the ground. Meeting in the center to strike. Solid right hand for Volkov. Blades shooting in for a takedown. He gets the takedown. Quick strikes from Blades. See if uh, he can elbow the crap out of him like he did to Overeem. Standing them back up. Round one is over. And they, they gave it to Volkov. Interesting. Considering Blades ended up on top. Blades taking the initiative here. Surprised he hasn't shot for a takedown once again here in round two. Volkov looks like he's actually winning this fight. And a win over Curtis Blades might be very, very impressive for him. Right now, Nganu is the heavyweight who is more than likely going to be fighting for the... Well, he is fighting for the title, I should say. But Volkov is slowing down a little bit. Might be getting a little winded. 6-7 he is. Round two's over. Volkov more than likely up by two rounds.
Second half of round number three. Volkov might be might might still be winning here. Third round just about over, and just a quick little reminder after after uh, the fight card is over, I'm probably gonna be giving my thoughts on um, UFC 250. Or maybe I'll probably do that on a, a live stream that I do later on. Right hook to the jaw. Volkov wobbles and fall. Blades might be winning here. Getting pasted. Referee has no option but to stop the fight. So Volkov was tagging him with jab, 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 jab. The entire fight. And he was winning. But Curtis Blades. Let's see what happened there. Blades lands a left jab and also scores with a massive right hook to the jaw. Volkov wobbles. Unloads with punches. So TKO victory for Curtis Razor Blades in Russia. Fight was rated as being great. And Curtis wants to fight Francis Ngannou for a third time. I don't think that's going to happen. Attendance of only 279 in Moscow. That's not very good. Gate of only 52,000. Yikes. Popularity did not change. Uh, so let's see here. Fight of the night is going to go to Kunchenko and Emiev. And then get rid of those. Performance bonuses. Ryan Hall. And, ooh, Jermaine Duran to me. Yeah, Jermaine Duran to me. There we go. And we lost $400,000 on this card. Yikes. Make sure that you go some to places that you can uh, actually sell, you know, you know, sell seats for. I just drew 200 people to a, a fight card. Yikes. So we'll go ahead and update our rankings as we skip all of these. I am interested to see the results of these, but... We'll see if we can negotiate contracts with anybody, see if anyone's uh, renegotiation period starts. I think there's also a Ryzen fight card going on. Might be interested in that. The Sweet Attack guy, he's actually on our roster, but I think he's trash. He lost like his first and only fight that he's had with us, and it wasn't even close. So we'll see what's cooking. What a wild night yesterday, though, it was, though. UFC 250. Amanda Nunes defending her title against Felicia Spencer. Co-main event, Cody Garbrandt with an amazing knockout over Rafael Asuncao. He, like, dipped and then just put all of his weight into that right hook and then landed it flush as time was expiring in the second round. Aljamain Sterling, an impressive faction. Uh, taking care of Cody Sanhagen via submission. He's going to be fighting for the title in his next fight. He should. And if he doesn't, it's going to be bullcrap. Neil Magny, my boy, getting the win. Sean O'Malley, amazing knockout over Eddie Wineland. It was a pretty nice card. Very exciting. Only fight that wasn't necessarily exciting was um, the main event. Amanda Nunes just dominating Felicia Spencer. A lot of toughness in her, but she just wasn't at Nunes' level. It was pretty evident. You could have bet a million dollars on that fight, just like somebody did, to win $166,000. Did not think it would go to a decision, though. 
But I mean, Felicia Spencer's tough. She went the distance with uh, with Cyborg, so you figured she had a chin on her. She was gonna, you know, hold her own out there. And boy, all these hirings. It's because I I just recently uh, started hiring a lot of female fighters for Invicta. Loaded up with some regen fighters, so that way we can get the the cards populated and everything else is good in that front. Start, you know, micromanaging a little bit more, you know. Hopefully uh, some good prospects come out of Invicta. Everybody's trying to get their hiring in right now. All the companies. As you can see, all those are probably mine. People making counter offers and crap like that. Alright. So let's update our rankings. First of all, take a look at that. Alright, Curtis Blades is up to number three. Passes by Nganu, as a matter of fact. So Overeem and Olenek for JDS. And then Blades getting a win over Volkov, Rosenstrike, and JDS. And I mean, if you look at this line of work, Blades should potentially be in line for a title fight. Just like JDS is, but JDS has that loss to Blades and Nganu on his name. I mean, what makes sense to me is obviously the Nganu Cormier fight, but maybe do JDS versus Blades again? He's back in 13 days. When is Blades back? 34 days. I think that's what we're going to be doing. I think Dos Santos versus Blades would make a lot of sense. Because this is what? 2020? Oh, geez, that was super recent. I actually don't know about that. I think Curtis I think Curtis Blaze is next in line. I really do. Everyone else moves up. Volkovs goes down to number eight. Gane moves up. One split or no. Where was he at previously? Hmm. Well, anyways. He moves up to number 14. Travis Brown is down to number 19. Light heavyweight, no movement. Middleweight, um, Murtazaliev is at number 23 now. After getting the win over Muradov. Wins over Ball uh, Dalloway and Muradov. Welterweight, there's no movement. Lightweight, Michael Johnson moves up to number 11. Uh, Makachev goes all the way down to number 23. Yikes. At featherweight, no movements. Bantamweight, no movement. Flyweight, Compasano is in at number 20. Brandon Royville in at number 21. Women's featherweight, no movements. Women's bantamweight. Jermaine Randomy goes all the way up to number 3. After getting the win over Kunitskaya. Uh, Stoliarenko gets number 21 after not really debuting. Maknatina. I mean, she's ranked, so might as well keep her. Keep it there. Women's flyweight, Jessica Rose Clark. Number 25, everyone else moves up. And straw weight, no movements. <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look at the results, actually. Uh, Tofik Musayev defends. Viafort defends. Lance Palmer wins. Sarah Kaufman wins. And then Ozzy Degulogobov wins. Nunes signs a new deal. Faber signs a new deal. Who is this? Hayato Sakurai. 45 years old. No, thank you. Ooh, Kaufman negotiations. She can fight, uh, it looks like bantamweight and featherweight. So let's do that. 
Let's get Sarah Kaufman in here, huh? Toss 5k her way. Chris Wade, 18 and 7, 6 and 4 in PFL, high level regional America. He's apparently 5 and 2 in the UFC. Huh. Huh, how about that? High level regional, lightweight. Bring him on. One of the two offers you'd consider. Okay. Lance Palmer at Featherweight, PFL Featherweight Champion, mid-level regional, but I love that record. Let's get him in here. Uh, let's see, Justin Willis. <clears throat> Remember, he lost to... Uh, Curtis Blades and then promptly got released. Big Titty go home. But, I mean, he's the number 11 heavyweight in the world, so let's go ahead and bring him in. Don't think he'll be fighting Curtis Blades, but definitely bring him in. Nate Richardson, 9-2, 2-0 oh in LFA. Let him get a little bit more seasoning. Julian Arosa, featherweight, lightweight. Two wins after a four loss losing streak. No thanks. Yuri Viafort, 13 and 7, mid level regional. No thanks. Let him get at least a little bit better. Pancrase increased to mid-level regional. Congrats to them. Let's see if we want to cut anybody. Okay. Randy Brown, the level regional. Brian Barbarina. A little of a regional, though. We'll see you later, Randy. Safarov. A little of a regional. One in four in the UFC. We'll see you later, sir. Kunitskaya. Low level regional, but she's uh, ranked, so we'll keep her. And then Zuba, no. Okay. Oh boy, look at all of these emails. Only one we're considering. This is going to be a while, so. Let's see, Kiri. Amya. Talia, Lexi, 
Ghosts are. Uh, I'm writing. I'm writing down all the names of all these uh, fighters that I need to send down to Invicta. Katsu. Uh, okay, so Maria Agapova, rival bid. Only one she's considering. Rodriguez extends deal. Brandon Royville signs. Isabella de Padua. Mm. Yeah, no. You'll be going down as well. Chase Hooper rival bid from deep. That's pretty funny. Only one he's considering. Alex Munoz extends Natalia. Uh, Fulatea. B. Bynwin. Okay. Daniela. Or Danella. Magdalena. Austin Hubbard extends deal. Star Poli. Shabazzian extends. That's good. Diana Felipe. Mm, Veda. Marina can stay up. Julian. Michelle. Yuzhen, Kizuwanda, and these are all on ten fight deals too. Mad, Madalena, Berenice, Corneli. Chini, Asuko, Irina, Tanea, Udne, Sianchka, Kuyugan, Lanfen, Lovani, Kaliso, Bammy Deli, Bryn, Georgina, Faye, Kalia, Savannah, Adele, Arvella, Hatsu, Ozoama, Keisha, Sean Driel, May, Chiao, Tarsiara. Uh, okay. Now the rest is just. Everyone getting approached. Curtis Blades. Okay, Smagaloth needs to be re signed. No, we'll give him three fights. Cut for free, yes. Two, three. Zero, zero. Chenko needs to be re-signed. Three thousand, but cut for free. Emiev coming off a loss, but he was four and two. 
So we'll do two fights cut for free. 1500. Salikov coming off a win. Two fights. I feel like that's fine. Don't need to be cut for free off of that. Safroff, we already released. Curtis Blades needs to be re signed. Fifty five hundred. Perfectly reasonable. Volkov will re sign. That's fine. We're keeping him around for sure. Randy Brown already released. Islam needs to be re signed. Michael Johnson needs to be re signed. Twenty-three, five hundred. All right, cool. We'll take that. Jim Miller needs to be re-signed. All right, Zuba needs to be re-signed. GDR needs to be re-signed. Ashley Reese needs to be re-signed. 0-1, the level regional. Do this. Bellator's offering her only one she's considering. That's fine. Uh, okay, Natalia Denisova. Okay, these are. Ooh, actually, hold on. No, these are more. These are more Invicta girls. Bestare, Anna, Dora, Valeria. Uh, Tina, Sarah, Lisa, Juliana, Diego Lima, Rifle Blade, uh, Gina, Let's just send all these girls down. Reminder that uh, our next show is going to be UFC on ABC Brunson versus Weidman. Let's just go ahead and set up all of the broadcasters. Of course, it is on ABC. Get all of our broadcasters on there. Be a pretty, uh, pretty big. Okay, no need to do there. Pretty big events. Sport TV and done. Yeah, okay. Boom. Done. Derek Brunson's hometown is North Carolina, so we're in South Carolina. Hopefully it draws a crowd. Might draw only not that big of a crowd to be honest. A lot of that has to do with like not being in like lucrative areas, you know, and not giving them really good cards. That guy must be really popular. That's why high level national Japan. Yeah, that's why. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna do all this. Uh, here you can't even see what I'm doing here. All these names from Invicta that I need to uh, send down. Of course, and Ganu are uh, heavyweights contender. 
Dominic Reyes is our current number one contender at the light heavyweight division. And he will be facing John Jones in the near future. And probably, he'll probably be booked in January, I believe. Because I think we're booked up to December. So he should be booked in January to fight against John Jones in that uh, first pay-per-view there. Here's a lot of Sonya is facing off against Robert Whitaker in Australia for the middleweight title. That's our last pay-per-view of the calendar year. Kamaru Usman will be facing George St. Pierre for the welterweight title at a later date. And he's back in 20 days, so maybe we might do that on the same card as John Jones. That could be interesting. George St. Pierre earning that white right by defeating Colby Covington. Lightweight Habib is scheduled to go up against Conor McGregor. That is in November 2020, so next month in game. Featherweight Alexander Volkanovsky defends his title against Max Holloway. That is in November, so on the same fight card as Habib versus McGregor too. Henry Cejudo defends his title against Marlon Moraes this month on the pay-per-view. He was originally scheduled to defend it against Piotr Jan, but he got injured. So now it is Marlon Moraes who gets a crack at it. And Piotr Jan, uh, I believe, will still you know, be in line for the title, but he'll just have to wait a little bit longer. Unless he wants to fight TJ Dillashaw when he comes back. In two months, I doubt that. Flyweight Joseph Benavidez is waiting on the winner between Pantoja and Da Silva. We currently have a women's featherweight tournament going on to decide who the number one contender is. Felicia Spencer, number one seed. Megan Anderson, number two. Currently in the semifinals with Megan Anderson fighting Amanda Lemos and Felicia Spencer fighting Leah Letson soon. Women's Bantamweight, we don't really have uh, much going on for Amanda Nunes at the current moment. She most recently defeated Aspen Ladd to defend her title. Uh, current contenders are Marion Renault after beating Macy Chason. She's got a win over Kohea and Chason. In successive fashion. Uh, GDR is coming off the win over Kunitskaya, but she lost to Chase on. Holly Holmes coming off the win over Caitlin Vieira, number two seed, but lost to Juliana Pena. So I'm thinking doing Renault versus Holm for number one contenders fight. Uh, Irene Aldana is fighting Rocky Pennington. And didn't she beat some? She beat Avila, but lost to Lad. That's right. Landsberg fighting Sarah McMahon. Sarah Morris fighting Betch Kohea. Yeah, so I'm thinking Renault versus Holm to decide the next contender for Amanda Nunes. Flyweight Shevchenko already has her uh, title fight scheduled, and it is going to be against Caitlin Chukagian after beating Modafferi and Murphy in consecutive fashion, and both be a stoppage. Chukagian's earned another right at the title. She might lose, but she's earned it. And then after the facts, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Strawweight Weili Zhang is waiting on the winner of Carla Esparza and Tatiana Suarez. Most recently defeated Rose Namajunas to defend her title. And that is where we are at right now. I'm thinking maybe Jan versus Rose. She's not back for a couple months. When's Jan back? Yeah, about a couple months too. Yeah, so I'm thinking either Jan versus Namajunas or Jan versus Gadella. That could be very interesting. Andraj coming off the loss to Jan. Alright, 
So that's going to do it for this episode. AZPlayout21 is the channel name. Thank you as always for watching. Be sure to like on the video. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Be sure to click on the bell so you get notifications whenever my videos have been uploaded. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys for UFC on ABC, Brunson versus Weidman. Have a good one.